This is Math 142, and this is part one of our 7.2 lectures. And in this piece, we're going to talk about um, the sum and difference formulas for, for trig functions. And what this means is, if we wanted to just add two angles together, so for example, if I had something like cosine of uh, 45 degrees plus 35 degrees, and I wanted to find an exact value for that, in other words, that's that's going to be the same as the cosine of 75 degrees. And I can do that on my calculator, cosine of 75 degrees, and I can get some sort of answer for it. But it's not necessarily going to be an exact answer. So first off, let me make sure I'm in degrees. I am. So if I just go cosine of 75 degrees, it gives me this decimal approximation. And that's good. You know, I have a, an approximation for it. But if I want an exact answer, um, now this is not going to work but it feels like you might be able to go cosine of 45 degrees plus cosine of 30 degrees you know the great advantage to that is we know the cosine of 45 degrees and we know the cosine of 30 degrees if you have our memorized we can look them up on unit circle and then we can just add those two things together i'm just going to show that this does not work cosine of 45 plus cosine of 30 not it. I, you know, cosine of 75 isn't going to spit out anything larger than 1 anyways. So we know that that's not, that's not quite correct. So how can we then deal with it? How could we um, get an exact value from this knowing the exact values of 45 and 30 degrees? We're going to come up with a formula. The first thing that I'm going to do is just try and try and solve it out. So if I had 45 degrees, and then I add 30 degrees to it, I would have these two pieces. And notice that's a that's a full rotation of 75 degrees, and this is the point one zero. Oops. I know this point right here, since it's a 45 degree rotation, the x part would be cosine of 45, the y part would be sine of 45. And then for this point here, it's not just 30, it's it's 75, it's 30 plus 45. So this point is cosine of 45 plus 30, and the, the y part is sine of that. And this is my goal right here, this cosine of 45 plus 30. Now notice this cosine 45, sine 45, I could find those points exactly. You know, I could just look them up on unit circle, or I know that I'm root two over two. Now this, unfortunately, I can't just go cosine of 30 here because it's not, it's, it's 75 degrees. So what I'm going to do is take this and change it a little bit. I'm still going to do that 45 degree rotation here, but I think in uh, this direction, I'll just rotate it down 30 degrees. And the reason I'm doing that is it's still a 75 degree rotation, but both of these endpoints I can get exact values for. So for example, this is this is cosine of 45, sine of 45. And this one, since it's a negative rotation of 30 degrees, this is going to be cosine of negative 30. But you know, notice uh, cosine of negative is the same as just cosine of the value. It's still a positive width. So I could say that's just the same as cosine of 30 degrees. And for sine, it's going down. So I could say it's negative sine of 30 degrees. That rotation there. And that rotation there are the they're the same. So this rotation right here and this rotation right here are, are the same. That means that this distance right here and this distance right here must be equivalent to each other. They're the same length. That's what my whole argument is going to hinge on. And what I'm trying to come up with is some way of combining these exact values to get that. So I think that what I will do is um, I'll just make a right triangle here and I'll compare that length to this right triangle here. Compare it to that length. And the length should be the same. Not should be, they are. <laughs> so if I lift this out, this is the point one zero. This point right here is, is this point. So it's Cosine 45 plus 30, sine of the same. 
So I can get at this hypotenuse by using the Pythagorean theorem. In other words, this length plus this length, square them both, add them together, equals the square of that. So notice the x value here is 1, and the x value here is cosine of 45 plus 30. So that means that this length right here is going to be 1 minus whatever that is, and that's this, cosine of 45 plus 30. That's how long this side is. And the length of this one, this is at height 0, and it goes all the way up to that sine 45 plus 30. So that's how long this is. So this is this length, sine of 45 plus 30. So the length of this then would be the square root of the square of these added together. It would be the square root, I don't know how long that's going to be, it's going to be pretty long, of this squared plus this squared, just using Pythagorean theorem. It's not negative, that was just a blank spot. That's how long this is. Now that length should be equal to this length. So I'm going to do the same sort of thing with it. I'm lifting off this triangle right here. So notice this point is the x part is cosine of 30 and the y part is negative sine of 30. And up here, it's cos 45 sine 45. It's this point. So if I think about this length right here from here to here, it gets out to cos 30, but it came from cos 45. So this length will be this value minus this. Like if this was 5 and this was 3, this would be too long, 5 minus 3. But it's not 5 and 3. It's cosine of 30 and cosine of 45. So that means that this length is cosine of 30 degrees minus cosine of 45 degrees. And this length is about height. This is sine 45 up here. This is negative sine 30. So this length here would be sine 45 degrees minus negative sine 30, which is the same as just saying plus sine 30. So that means then that this length here must be square root of cosine of 30 degrees minus cosine of 45 degrees squared plus sine of 45 degrees plus sine of 30 degrees, that whole thing squared. Now this is the length of this. And we know that those two lengths are equal. So this right here must equal that right there. I'm going to write that up here and then clean up so we have some space to work on. All right, let's do some algebra. Cosine of the sum of those angles squared plus sine of the sum of those angles squared. And here I have the angles individually, cosine of 30, cosine of 45, sine of 45, sine of 30. Now what I'm hoping is that that is going to help me think about some way to write, and not hoping, I know it's going to happen, um, some way to write this in terms of cosine of 45, sine of 45, etc. So I'm, we're going to do a bunch of algebra now. First thing, these are both square rooted, so I could square both sides, meaning that they're still equal to each other. So that must be equal to that if the, uh, if the square roots are equal to each other. So now I've got some, some squaring to do. And I'm going to clean up this notation a little bit. Notice how it says sine of 45 plus 30 squared. We really want to write this sine squared of 45 plus 30, showing that, that the sine is taken and then it's squared. Just to, just, just notation. So first thing we have here is this one minus that cosine of 45 plus 30 and it's squared. So if I square this, it's not just gonna be one squared minus cosine squared of that. 
When you square something, remember you multiply them together. So this would be one minus cosine, and I'm just gonna call this my mess, times one minus cosine of my mess. Just so I don't have to rewrite the 45 plus 30 over and over again. So notice if I foil this out, I get one minus a cosine mess, minus a cosine mess. So minus two of those cosine, what I'm calling the mess. And then negative cosine times negative cosine is positive cosine squared of that. So this right here multiplies out to 1 minus 2 cosine of 45 plus 30 plus cosine squared 45 plus 30. And notice this is already, uh, this part right here is already squared. So I don't have to do anything with that. This is just uh, plus 2, uh, sorry, not 2, plus sine squared of 45 plus 30. And let me just work on this left-hand side for a little while, and then I'll come back to that right-hand side. Here's what's nice, cosine squared plus sine squared. I know that cosine squared plus sine squared if they're of the same angle as one. So this is this whole thing is a one. So now I have one minus two cosine of 45 plus 30 plus one. I can combine those ones together and that becomes two minus two cosine 45 plus 30. Great, so there's where my left-hand side ends up getting at. So let's uh, deal with this right-hand side. I'm going to square that. So it's the same idea of, as squaring these. In other words, I'm going to go cosine of 30 minus cosine of 45 times cosine of 30 minus cosine of 45. Now if I square that, that's going to become cosine squared 30 minus 2 cosine 30 cosine 45 plus cosine squared of 45 degrees. That's just that part right there squared. And now if I squared this part, same idea, something times itself, that is gonna become sine squared of 45 degrees plus two sine 45 sine 30 plus sine squared of 30 degrees. And notice all these things are all these things are added together. So let me pick up some pieces in here. Cosine squared of 30 degrees plus sine squared of 30 degrees, that's a one. Sine squared of 45 degrees plus cosine squared of 45 degrees, that's another one. And then these things, they're just gonna be what they are. So it looks like I have a plus two sine 45 sine 30 minus 2 cos 30 cos 45. So if I were to kind of simplify this, 1 plus 1 is 2, and then I have this plus 2 sine 45 sine 30 minus 2 cos 30 cos 45. I could subtract 2 from both sides. <laughs> so now I have negative 2 cosine of 45 plus 30 is equal to, that's gone, so 2 sine 45 times sine 30 minus 2, and cos 30 times cos 45, I'm just going to switch the order so it matches that. They're just multiplied together, I can multiply them whatever I, uh, order I want. Cos 45 uh, cosine of 30 degrees. Almost there, divide everything by negative two to get that cos 45 plus 30 all alone. And notice I get cosine of 45 plus 30 is equal to, now this term's gonna be positive, so I'm gonna make it my first term. So negative two divided by negative two is positive one. So cosine of 45 times cosine of 30, and then this will be negative, so minus, that's just the negative one, sine of 45 degrees, sine of 30 degrees. Wow, that is a ton of work to get this result. 
cosine of 45 degrees plus 30 degrees is the same as cosine of the first one times cosine of the second one opposite operator right that's plus so minus sine of the first one sine of the second one now I know exact values for all of these so this cosine of 75 degrees if I want to know exactly what that is now I can look up these on the unit circle cosine of, of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2 cosine of 30 degrees is root 3 over 2 minus sine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2 sine of 30 degrees is 1 half so then from there I can go root 2 times root 3 is root 6 over 4 minus root 2 over 4 so my answer is root 6 minus root 2 over 4 so now I know the exact value of that in terms of those square roots now if I had another one to do cosine of 105 degrees now if I look at 105 degrees it's, it's not on here but can I build 105 degrees from my benchmark angles and I can 60 plus 40 is 105 so that means I could think of this as cosine of 60 plus 45 degrees so now let me break it out the same way what I could do is I could draw the same picture again go through the exact same process but I'll end up with not the exact same result but what I consider the same result because notice when I had cosine of 45 plus 30 or I'll just call it uh, u plus v two angles added together what I ended up with was cosine of the second one first one times cosine of the second one and then that's addition so it was subtraction opposite operator sine of the first one sine of the second one I could have generalized it right I could have gone through the exact same steps with u and v and I would have ended up with this relationship so now that I'm here cosine of 60 plus 45 degrees that's gonna be the same as cosine of 60 cosine of the first one times cosine of the second one opposite operator sine of the first one sine of the second one cosine of 60 degrees is one half cosine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2 I can look these up on the unit circle or maybe just know them sine of 60 degrees root 3 over 2 sine of 45 degrees root 2 over 2 so sine of uh, cosine of 105 then must be root 2 over 4 sorry root 2 over 4 minus root 6 over 4 so root 2 minus root 6 over 4 there's an exact value for that check it on my calculator this is not a bad thing to be able to do what I was trying to find was cosine of 105 degrees what I came up with on my calculator was the square root of 2 close off that minus the square root of 6 makes sense to me that my answer is negative close off that so there's my whole numerator divided by 4 it should give me the same value it does so I can check my answer on my calculator pretty easily to see if I'm right or not now we can get another relationship out of here as well we can think about u minus v now intuitively it feels like it should be the same in just opposite operator like if that's minus this will be plus and that that is what happens but if we think about y if I have cosine of u minus v notice that's the same as cosine of u plus negative v which if we just think about this plus this we could shove it into here that would be cosine of u cosine of negative v minus sine of u sine of negative v and now we know that cosine is is about width so if I had an angle v or an angle negative v they both have the same cosine so cosine of negative v is the same as cosine of v oops not equal to minus sine u now if I had this angle of v sine is height so this height and this height they're the same magnitude they're the same length but they're in opposite directions so sine of negative v 
is negative sine of v. And notice a negative times a negative is positive. So cosine u times cosine v plus sine u sine v. So this equals this, cosine of the first one, cosine of the second one, opposite operator, that's minus this is plus, sine of the first one, sine of the second one. And now sometimes you'll see this combined into a single statement. Uh, cosine of u plus or minus v is equal to cosine u cosine v. And then it, we don't want it to match this. It's not plus or minus. It's the opposite operator. So we can say this instead of plus or minus, we could say minus or plus. I'll clean that up a little bit. Minus or plus. And if it's written that way, that just means this is going to be opposite of whatever that is. So now we have a sum and difference formula for cosine. Let's get it for sine as well. So a couple of relationships that I know that were, is going to help me get this for sine is I know that sine of some angle is the same as cosine of that angle minus, minus pi over 2, or minus 90 degrees. And cosine of some angle is sine of 90 degrees minus that angle, pi over 2 minus whatever that angle is. So if I think if I had sine of u plus v, that would be the same as cosine of these two things together minus pi over 2. So that would be the same as cosine of u plus v minus the 90 degrees. Think back to those graphs. It's just a shift, right, of 90 degrees to get there. So now what we could do is we could break this up using this relationship. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to group the v minus pi over 2. In other words, I'm going to think of this as cosine of the first one plus the second one. So that would be, using this expansion, cosine of the first one times cosine of the second one. Opposite operator, that's plus, so this will be minus. Sine of the first one, sine of the second one. Cosine of an angle minus pi over 2 is just sine of that angle. That's this one right here. So cosine of u, this is the same as sine of v, minus, I have this sine of u. Now sine of an angle minus pi over 2, that's not exactly this. This is like the opposite of that. So I could think of this as sine of negative pi over 2 minus v. And sine of a negative thing is negative sine of that angle. And sine of the angle, uh, sine of 90 degrees minus the angle is the same as cosine of the angle. So this is cosine of v, negative cosine of v. So this would be, this is the same as negative cosine of v. A negative times a negative is positive. So cosine of the first one, sine of the second one, same operator, sine of the first one, cosine of the second one. So now I have some expansion rule for sine as well. And notice it is, and I'm just going to change the order of these. I'm just going to do the sine one first, just so it matches that. It doesn't matter, whatever helps you remember it. But I like to think of it as sine of the first one, cosine of the second one, same operator, cosine of the first one, sine of the second one. So if this is minus, this is also minus. So let me use these to find some exact values um, that I wouldn't be able to find without them. I want to find exact value of cosine of pi over 12. If I do it on my calculator, it's going to give me some decimal. It's not necessarily going to get it to me. So let me take a peek at my unit circle. Now pi over 12 is what I'm looking for. And I don't see pi over 12 here anywhere or anything like that. But um, I'm going to start to think about these fractions in terms of twelfths. So in other words, pi over 6, that is 2 pi over 12. Or pi over 4, that would be like times 3 over 3. So this is 3 pi over 12. And pi over 3, that would be 4 pi over 12. Now, I'm probably not going to add to get to pi over 12, but I could subtract. Like, notice if I go 3 pi over 12 minus 2 pi over 12, 
that would give it to me. I could even go 4 pi over 12 minus 3 pi over 12. It could go either route. So I'm going to go pi over 4 minus pi over 6, because I know that that makes my pi over 12. So I'm going to think of this as cosine of uh, pi over 4 minus pi over 6. Now if I expand that, I can expand that now using this relationship. Cosine of the first one. Cosine of the second one. Opposite operator. Sine of the first one, sine of the second one. And then I'll work that on the out. Cosine of pi over 4, I could look it up if I don't know it. Root 2 over 2. Cosine of pi over 6. Root 3 over 2. Sine of pi over 4, root 2 over 2. Sine of pi over 6, 1 half. And so notice this would be 6 over 4. Uh, square root of 6 over 4 plus root 2 over 4. There is my exact answer for a cosine of pi over 12. Sine of 105 degrees. I think I'll go 135 minus 30. I know those, those values exactly. So I'll think of this as sine of uh, 135 degrees minus 30 degrees. So if I expand that out, now I'm using that sine relationship. So sine is sine of the first one, cosine of the second one, same operator, cosine of the first, sine of the second. And then I either know these or I look mm -hmm. them up. Uh, 135 sine is root 2 over 2, cosine of 30, root 3 over 2 minus cosine of 135 is negative root 2 over 2. I'll try to write it legibly. Sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. And if I multiply that out, I get root 6. Notice that's minus a negative, so plus root 2 over 4. Same answer. It's going to happen. Uh, sine of 195. I could break that up similarly. I'm going to think of this as 150 plus 45. Those are ones that I that I know. And I know that that addition is going to break out to sine of the first one, cosine of the second one, same operator, cosine of the first one, sine of the second one. Sine of 150 is 1 half, cosine of 45 root 2 over 2. Cosine of 150 is negative root 3 over 2. Sine of 45 is root 2 over 2. So this would be root 2 minus root 6 over 4. So notice on, on this, we have lots of ways to, to break these up. We have lots of ways to take a value and split it up. But not any value is going to work. As a matter of fact, if you just give me a random number, it, I'm, prob I'm not going to be able to break it up. It has to be real specific values for this. We're getting a lot of root 6s and root 2s over and over again. This only helps for kind of a, sliv a slither of values, but, it, but it's a start for us. In other words, if, I have, if I'm adding 45s and 30s, those are some good values I could break up, or subtracting 30s from 45s and that sort of thing. Um, I'll get some values on here I can get exact values of. But if I, you gave me something like, say, uh, 50 degrees, I don't know how to get there from combining any, any of these. Um, they, I don't know how to get there. <laughs> so I don't think I can. So that means that 50 degrees, like this doesn't help me for 50 degrees, but it gives me a start for certain values. Now there's one last set of sum, sum and difference formulas that I want to get at, and it's tangent. So I'm not going to go through the derivation of them uh, for tangent, but I'm going to I'm going to show you what it is. But well, the way that we could get them is we know that tangent um, of some angle is sine over cosine. So what we could do is stack sine over cosine, and then we would do we would combine some terms, and we would we would get to the this answer that we get. It's actually a pretty fun exercise if you want to give it a go. But uh, tangent of the sum or difference of, uh, of two angles is tangent of the first one 
same operator, tangent of the second one, over uh, one, and then opposite operator, tangent of the first one times tangent of the second one. So if I think about tangent of 15 degrees or tangent of 105 degrees, uh, I'll show you how to break them up. Let's break this up as 45 minus 30. And let's do this one as 60 plus 45. And I just chose those, uh, well, first off, because they work, but then also, because then we have a, a minus case and an, an addition case. So tangent 15, if I think about that as the same as tangent of 45 minus 30, and I shove it into here, that's going to be uh, tangent of the first one, same operator, so minus tangent of the second one over one opposite operator plus tangent of the first one times tangent of the second one. Tangent of 45 degrees, that's one. Tangent of 30, if I look at 30 degrees, uh, 30 degrees is the point uh, root three over two, one half. Remember tangents y over x or sine over cosine. So that's one half over root three over two. The one halves cancel out. It's one over root three, which is the same as root three over three over one plus a uh, tangent of 45 degrees is one tangent of 30 is root three over three and let me keep going from here then um i'm going to combine these fractions so this one i'm going to think of it as three thirds so that would be three minus root three over three and that whole thing would be over same thing here. I'm going to think of this one as uh, three thirds. So this would be three plus root three over three. And then those thirds cancel out. So that gives me three minus root three over three plus root three. If you don't like the thirds canceling out, think of this as division, which would be the times the reciprocal of that denominator. The threes would cancel out. So there's that. So let me check that. Uh, tangent of 15 degrees. I'm using my calculator to check this. Tangent of 15 degrees give me that. And 3 minus root 3, 3 plus root 3. So 3 minus square root of 3. Close off all those parentheses. There's my numerator. Divided by 3 plus uh, square root of 3. Same thing. It's the right answer. tangent of 105 that would be tangent of 60 plus 45 so that's going to be tangent of the first one plus tangent of the second one same operator over one and then opposite operator tangent of the first one times tangent of the second one tangent of 60 degrees 60 degrees is the point one half root 3 over 2 is it terminates at that point so that would be this one this one flipped over so instead of being 1 over root 3 it'd be root 3 over 1 so this is just root 3 plus 1 over 1 minus root 3 times 1 and that would be root 3 plus 1 over 1 minus root 3 which is the same as uh, I could write it as 1 plus root 3 over 1 minus root 3. And let me see if that works too. So tangent of 105 is that. And then I'm going to go, um, it was 1 plus root 3. Close it off. Divided by 1 minus root 3. Yep, they're equivalent. So I am, I'm good. So as you do your practice set from this set, um, you should be able to be getting very familiar with how to use these formulas, these relationships. My expectation is that you can use them. Um, you can work to memorize them. I think it will help you if you memorize them. Um, but I think referencing back to them is a fair thing to ask. So as you're working through these, send me any questions that you have, message me or post things in the forum.